This past Tuesday morning, September the uh, 8th, as I was praying about some things, praying about what, what is the present word of the Lord for, uh, for us, for America, for our world, as I prayed, I was suddenly taking, taken up in the spirit and I saw a vision. That's not something that is so unusual. Often over my life, I have, the Holy Spirit has given me visions of things. It's one of the ways he has talked to me since I was a, um, a small boy. But it's not exactly usual either. But I was taken up in the spirit and I saw a huge warehouse that was filled with rooms. Uh, one room after another, like a, the hallway of a motel, one room after another, maybe 50, 60 rooms. The doors to all the rooms were closed. And as I, I prayed and I thought about what, what am I seeing? And if you've ever seen a vision of the Lord, you know that it, it actually seems it actually seems real, it actually looks real to you, though, though you, you, you know it's not, but you don't think about that, it just looks real, it's like you're actually seeing it. Kind of like, I, I found a way to describe it in our times, it's kind of like it's live streamed to you, somehow. As I prayed about this and its meaning, I then saw a name on a sign at the entrance of the warehouse. And it was then that I noticed this was a, a whole complex of warehouses, several of them. The sign read, Opportunities Unlimited. That was the name of this complex, Opportunities Unlimited. And the background of the sign was like, uh, it looked like a, a skyline that just went on and on and on, reaching out further and further. And then I saw that the warehouses were numbered, one, two, three, four, etc., in very bold red numbers. The numbers went to 22, but the number 22 was not red. It was a different color and it was a deep royal blue color. Now, from previous studies, I knew blue is a color that is representative of Holy Spirit in the scriptures. Colors in scripture have prophetic meanings often, and the color blue often represents a moving of the Holy Spirit or something Holy Spirit's doing or something he's leading. It, it also uh, often uh, represents anointings of the Holy Spirit, outpourings of the Holy Spirit, awakenings, revivals. Those are uh, representative of the color blue prophetically. I saw two, two in very blue, dark blue letters. I then heard a sound of wind and suddenly there were white light angels at every door as though the angels came in on the wind. They were just there white light angels at every door. And, and these angels opened all the doors and held them open. Like someone that would open a door for you so that you could go on through and hold it open for you. That's what it was, it was like. And then I heard Holy Spirit say three things and it sounded like he said them out loud to me. I don't believe it was out loud, but, but that's the way it sounded to me. Number one, he said, I have heard the voice 
of my ecclesia, decreeing doors to open. Number two, he said, hear the sound of doors swinging open. And number three, he said, the entrance to opportunities is open for the governing ecclesia. The, the entrance to opportunities is open for the governing ecclesia. And somehow I knew when he said it, it included every area of their life. All areas, business areas, financial areas, all areas of their lives. Then it became like a prophetic word. For it is time for the mega surge of my kingdom. I will now rise and lead my people through doors of awesome breakthrough. Confinement locks are now being broken. Hear the sound of confinement breaking. Hear the sound of angels of breakthrough breaking the locks off doors at my commands. Economic locks are breaking. Government locks are breaking. Religious locks are breaking. Education locks are breaking. Hear the sound of, de of demon confinement breaking. Hear the sound of doors of opportunity swinging wide for my sons and daughters. Hear the sound of keys in the voice of my ecclesia. Enter new era opportunities. And I thought, what a graphic way for Holy Spirit to emphasize keys to me. Hear the sound of keys in the voice of my ecclesia. Hear the sound of keys in the voice of my ecclesia. And of course, I then begin to, to scan the scriptures, go through the scriptures and think about the meaning of this and how it fits. And now I want to shift us into New Testament doctrine that addresses this. See, prophetic words are verified through biblical principles, doctrinal principles. It's what apostles do. Remember, um, Holy Spirit has been reintroducing doctrine to us for the past couple of months. It's like he's preparing us each week uh, to, to be a success, to answer the challenge of our, our time. And I spoke a couple of weeks ago about overthrowing thrones of iniquity. Then last week, I talked about the ecclesia guarding covenants that God has made with our nation or with a, any nation. And today, Holy Spirit is talking about keys to open doors our enemy has closed or doors he's trying to close, but we want to keep them open. Keys to open doors that are shut. Our adversary, the devil, uses people, places, things, culture, government, and we've been talking about that the last couple of months to try to shut us out, shut the ecclesia of the church out. Now, Jesus said this in Matthew 16, 18, and 19 in his definition of the ecclesia, which I have gone over many times with you in the past and especially the last couple of months. Remember, the ecclesia is a governing body. It has authority. It can forbid. It can permit. It is a ruling body for King Jesus. It is also a voting body that decides laws and cultural assignments. The king says this, Matthew 16, 18, and 19, on this rock I will build my church and the gates of hell will not prevail against it and I will give you the keys. I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven and whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. Whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. He talks about keys to the kingdom and he says very clearly, 
I'm going to give my ecclesia the keys, keys that open. Now, Acts chapter 2, verse 1 through 2. In Acts chapter 2, we see the birth of the ecclesia. The ecclesia Jesus defined in Matthew 16, 18, and 19. We see Holy Spirit comes to anoint or empower that ecclesia, and he reveals a very special key that is voiced there in Acts chapter 2 and verse 4. A very special key that is voiced, which is restored spirit language. It reads, when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place, and suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind filled all the house where they were sitting. Then there appeared to them divided tongues of fire, and one sat upon each of them, and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. We need to see today the, the vital truth of Matthew 16 and Acts chapter 2 and a key that opens doors. Jesus says the ecclesia will be given the keys to kingdom authority, the keys to governing authority in my kingdom. And we, we know that one of the keys is being filled with the Holy Spirit and praying in other tongues, praying in the Spirit. Remember, the uh, Holy Spirit said to me when I asked him to help me define speaking in other tongues, remember that he said it's governing intercession. It's governing intercession, which has changed my life completely. He said it's governing intercession, and one of the keys that we see to a functioning ecclesia is praying in the Spirit. It's praying in the governing language activated by the Holy Spirit. It's praying in the supernatural power of the Holy Spirit, praying in the supernatural unity of purpose language of the, of the Godhead and of angels. The two passages marry together perfectly, which means you can't be the effective, functioning, governing ecclesia on the earth that you could be without maintaining Holy Spirit filledness and praying in a heavenly prayer language. Complete function requires it. Complete function. Yes, you pray with your understanding, which for us would be English, and we've seen that. Yes, you make decrees with your own understanding. It will activate faith, and we've seen that. But also, pray in the Spirit. Make ruling decrees in the Spirit. We would not be told to do this if it were not vitally important. The Amplified Bible says of Matthew 16, 18, and 19, Jesus said, and on this rock, a huge rock like Gibraltar, I will build my church. And the gates of Hades, the powers of the infernal region, shall not overpower it or be strong to its detriment or hold out against it. It will not shut it out. That's what he said. It won't shut it out. I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. And whatever you bind, declare to be improper or unlawful on earth must be what is already bound in heaven. And whatever you loose, declare lawful on earth must be what is already loosed in heaven. In other words, there must be agreement with heaven. What the ecclesia binds or declares unlawful must agree with what heaven declares to be unlawful. What it declares to be lawful must agree with what heaven declares to be lawful. Well, no one would pray that kind of prayer better than Holy Spirit. He would, he would be the best at that 
that there is. Prayers in the spirit are prayers that are in agreement with heaven. Why? Because the Godhead always agrees with itself. It's a supernatural, it's in supernatural unity. So when we pray in our prayer language, we can declare things to be lawful or unlawful. We can bind what is improper on the earth with power language that aligns in agreement with heaven. It agrees with what heaven is saying. Holy Spirit helps us pray that kind of prayer. Now Murdoch's translation reads, I will build my church and the gates of death shall not triumph over it. To you will I give the keys of the kingdom of heaven. Whatever you shall bind on earth shall be bound in heaven and whatever you shall unbind on earth shall be unbound in or by heaven. If things are bound up you, 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 and you need them unbound, if they are locked and you need it unlocked, in Jesus' name, he says, use a key Christ gives to unbind things. Pray in the Spirit. Holy Spirit knows how to pray prayers that unlock things. Jesus said in John 14, 16, he is our helper. In John 16, 7, he said, he's your advantage. We've been given an awesome advantage. Use it. Let Holy Spirit help you unbind it. Let him pray door opening prayers. Often how this has worked in my life is when I've been in, in binding type situations and I've been in my share. <laughs> but in those situations, I've said, Holy Spirit, in Jesus name, help me pray this. Help me unlock this Holy Spirit. Help me pray in alignment with heaven. Help me pray in the spirit realm and, and unlock this. I don't know how many times I've asked that. Hundreds. And I begin to pray in the Holy Spirit about it. And I can guarantee you this. I would not be here today without that advantage. No way. Situations were too complex and too hard in the natural realm. And I wouldn't have survived without this advantage. And often after praying in the spirit for a while, Holy Spirit, he will start to teach me about the situation. He'll start to teach the strategies. And I'll start to discern the prayers or the decrees that I have made in spirit language that I've just voiced. I start to I start to interpret what the meaning is. And Holy Spirit, he starts to give the understanding. He gives insight. And then I can use my understanding to make decrees in English. I can then voice the word keys that unlock. I can voice it. Then I can, I can declare scriptures that that, that, that might apply. Then I can pray it more effectively with my understanding and my confession of faith, which also must be voiced, declared. Then boldness and, and then confidence surges. If it's bound up, yes, decree, de decree your faith. Yes, declare God's word, but yes, pray it in the spirit. Holy Spirit knows how to unlock things you don't know how. He knows how to open doors you can't open. He also knows how to shut them and nobody can open them. He knows how to supernaturally open opportunities to you that the adversary may have shut. The Message Bible 
Matthew 16, 18 and 19. This is the rock on which I will put together my church. A church so expensive with energy that not even the gates of hell will be able to keep it out. And that's not all. You will have complete and free access to God's kingdom keys to open any and every door. No more barriers between heaven and earth, earth and heaven. A yes on earth is a yes in heaven. A no on earth is a no in heaven. That is an incredible statement. I will give you keys to open any and every door. The ecclesia is given keys to open any and every door. Jesus himself says that. Not one of the disciples, not, not one of the first apostles, not a present day prophet or apostle. Jesus says, I will give you the keys to open any and every door. No ambiguity in it. There've been a few times in my life, as I said, when doors closed. I've been through a few times when doors of opportunity closed, doors of blessings closed, doors to, to resources closed, doors of ministry closed. I've been, I've been blacklisted a few times and I'm such a nice guy. There's been a couple of times when the problem wasn't just finding the key to unlock the door. I couldn't even find the door. But I have a helper. John 14, 16 declares. I have a comforter. John 14, 26 declares. Jesus called the Holy Spirit our helper. And our comforter, if you have a helper, especially a divine one, a God one, why wouldn't you use him? Why wouldn't you let him work? Word comforter is the Greek word parakletos. It means one who comes alongside you to, to aid or support. It means one who stands beside you to strengthen you. It, it means a defender. It means an intercessor. It means a pleader. It means a supernatural helper equal to Jesus himself. I have a supernatural advantage. And so do you if you are born of God, if you're a born again heir. I have the Holy Spirit with me and in me. I can be filled with his his presence, I, I can be baptized in his presence. I have a supernatural defender. He's omnipresent and he's omnipotent and he's omniscient. I have a, a supernatural intercessor supporting and strengthening me. And he knows where the door is and he knows how to open it. In Jesus name, I, I, I can say, Holy Spirit, pray through me. Help me pray in spirit language. I can pray in a heavenly language, door opening prayers. I can pray prayers that give me opportune advantage. When I can't open the door, he knows how. He also has angels that are locksmiths. They're door openers. There are times when the ecclesia, the New Testament church of our times, finds doors closed to it. Doors closed to a region. Could be doors closed to a state. Could be doors closed to a nation. Doors closed to our message. We are seeing that right now in our nation. There's an attempt to close the door to the church, slam it in our, our face. Doors, doors to, 
to engage in the culture doors that the enemy wants to close. But Jesus says, I'm going to give you the keys to open them. And one of them is praying in the spirit. We have to learn the doctrines of the scripture and quit acting like they don't exist or that they were for another time. They're for now. There have been times here in Ohio when the ecclesia or the kingdom hub here, when doors slammed closed and were locked up pretty tight. There have been times when it looked absolutely impossible. Why did it look that way? Because in the natural way it was. It was absolutely impossible. But we have a supernatural helper and we can testify. We have a supernatural advantage, no matter the odds. The odds are always in our favor. How many times have we said it? We can testify. I mean, the odds in the natural have been against us so many times, but in the spirit realm, the odds were in our favor. And guess what? We won anyway. We have a supernatural helper and through governing intercession, calling out to God with our understanding, yes, but beyond that, praying in the spirit and, and praying some more in the spirit 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 and continuing to pray in the spirit. Doors have opened, only Holy Ghost could open. Victories have come that only he could provide. He prayed nothing's impossible prayers. He prayed and activated power to change things, just as he did in the book of Acts. He brings order into the chaos, just like when his word was voiced in the very beginning to a chaotic mass earth. He's a divine locksmith. He's a way opener. So if you keep coming to closed up doors, he says, ask Holy Spirit to help you pray. It's a key. Now, the keys Jesus refers to symbolizing government, uh, government authority is first mentioned in Isaiah 22, 22. And it references the Chamberlain anointing that Holy Spirit pours out on the ecclesia. Remember the vision that I started with just a few moments ago. I saw the number 22 in blue numbers. Blue in scripture represents Holy Spirit and his anointings. Isaiah 22, 22 is what Jesus was connecting his ecclesia to in Matthew 16, 18, and 19, which is highly significant. In Isaiah 22, two chamberlains are mentioned. Shebna, who is a type of Satan. A type in scripture simply means an example of or a representative of. Shebna, he's, he's like Satan, he, he represents Satan. And then Eliakim, who is a type of Christ Jesus. He represents Jesus. Now, why would Christ be tying his statement concerning his ecclesia to a 700-year-old prophecy? Well, a chamberlain was the chief operating officer for a king and his kingdom. He was the highest ranking executive in the kingdom except for the king himself. He is also the manager of everything. The chamberlain carried the keys to the kingdom. There was a hook or a ring that would be sewn on the shoulder of his robe 
that represented authority. His mantle had a, a hook on it and the keys would be attached to this, to this ring. He, he was dressed different than the rest of the staff. He had different clothes that he wore. And the keys that were quite large in those days could be a foot long, some of those keys. Uh, they would attach to this hook or this ring on his shoulder. And sometimes they would hang a gold chain around his neck and just attach uh, the keys to that chain and he would sling them back over his shoulder. Those keys symbolized authority. And the government was said to be on his shoulders. That is why Holy Spirit prophesied through Isaiah in Isaiah 9, 6 concerning Jesus that our kingdom's government is on Christ's shoulder. Uh, the, the Chamberlain anointing is upon him. Now, among the keys the Chamberlain carried were the keys to the king's house, the king's uh, the keys to the king's bedroom, the keys to the royal court, the keys to the judges' chambers themselves, and he carried the keys to the king's treasury. He had the keys to the door of kingdom treasures. He decided who gets in, who doesn't get in. He's the doorkeeper. He has the keys to all the doors. He can open them. He can close them. He can lock them. He can unlock them. Now, Shebna was kingdom chamberlain, but he had misused his authority. He had abused it. He was polluted. He was, he was vile, a vile person. He was rebellious. Again, he's a, he's a type of Satan. He represents Satan. Satan abused his authority, Satan was, he's polluted, he's vile, he was rebellious. But the prophecy was, the authority you've stolen, the authority you've polluted, the authority you've abused will be stripped from you and given to Eliakim, who is a type of Christ. He will receive all the keys. Governing authority will be carried on his shoulders. He will be able to open all doors or close them. Here's the, the prophetic word concerning Jesus, the Messiah. Just back up a couple of verses before Isaiah 22, 22 to verse 19. Yes, Shebna, I will drive you out of office, says the Lord. I will pull you down from your high position and then I will call my servant Eliakim, son of Hilkiah, to replace you. I will dress him in your royal robes and I will give him your title and your authority. And he will be a father to the people of Jerusalem and Judah. I will give him the key to the house of David, the highest position in the royal court. When he opens doors, no one will be able to close them. When he closes doors, no one will be able to open them. He will bring honor to his family name for I will drive him firmly in place like a nail in the wall. Jesus connects Isaiah's prophecy to his declaration and defining when he says, I will build my ecclesia and I will, I will build my own ecclesia and hell won't prosper against it. He includes the keys in his definition. In the definition, Matthew 16, 18. Now Jesus, of course, is in the royal lineage of King David, but he didn't sit on David's throne. It was higher. He sat down on a throne at the right hand of God in heaven as King of Kings and as Lord of Lords, but not before, not before he stripped Lucifer of his authority and took back all the keys. 
He even took back the keys to death, hell, and the grave. The government of the kingdom of God is now on his shoulders. All authority had been given to him in heaven and on earth. He has the key to every door. He can open the doors or he can close them. He can open doors and no one can shut them. He can close doors and no one can open them. He has the key to all the doors. But amazingly, amazingly, heaven's king and the king of our kingdom, Jesus says in Matthew 16, 18 and 19, I am giving my ecclesia access to all the keys. In my name, my ecclesia can now bind or lose, open or close, forbid or permit. I'm, in my name, I'm giving my joint heirs access to the keys. They can declare doors to open or they can declare doors to close. And Holy Spirit will empower them and heaven's angels will assist them. And locks will get unlocked. I'm putting the keys to governing authority in, in their hands. Please hear what he's saying. It's such a, a vital principle and doctrine for our times. You got to hear it with your spiritual ears and then we got to apply it. You, you got to let the, the truth of this take root in you. Dare believe what the king says. Jesus says in Matthew 16, 18 and 19, the Message Bible reads this way. This is the rock on which I will put together my church. A church so expansive with energy that not even the gates of hell will be able to keep it out. They can't keep it out. Why? Because I'm giving them the keys. And that's not all. You will have complete and free access to God's kingdom keys to open any and every door. No more barriers between heaven and earth, earth and heaven. A yes on earth is a yes in heaven. A no on earth is a no in heaven. We have the keys. And that, that, that just blows my mind. And one of the most vital of those keys is the baptism of the Holy Spirit and speaking in heavenly language. It activates the ecclesia's voice of authority. It engages keys that opens doors to opportunities unlimited. It activates angels that, that unlock doors and keeps them open. It opens doors to warehouses filled with blessings. It opens doors to warehouses filled with resources. It opens doors hell has tried to close on us. It opens doors to society, to government, to culture that has attempted to shut us out. The king says, no more barriers. Complete and total access you can't keep my people out. I will give them the access keys. To every door, the chamberlain anointing will be poured out upon them. They have my keys. And so I heard the Holy Spirit just a few days ago, Tuesday, past week, say three things. I have heard the voice of my ecclesia decreeing doors to open. So he said, hear the sound of doors swinging open. The entrance to opportunities is open for my governing heirs. For it is time for the mega surge of my kingdom. I will now rise and lead my people through doors of awesome breakthrough. Hear the sound of confinement breaking. Hear the sound of angels of breakthrough. Breaking the locks off doors at my command 
Economic locks break. Government locks break. Religious locks break. Education locks break. Hear the sound of demon confinement breaking. Hear the sound of doors of opportunity swinging wide for my sons and daughters. Hear the sound of keys in the voice of my ecclesia. Enter new era opportunities. Singers and musicians, come please. We're in the season now of open doors. The ecclesia is rising to begin to open doors that have been closed for decades. Hell's not going to keep us out. Mm. We're going to declare this today. Stand if you would. Lord, I thank you for the authority that you've given. And in the name of King Jesus, we declare doors open in Washington, D.C. Open in Jesus' name. Let supernatural angelic beings break the locks and hold the door open for the ecclesia to pass through. We break the locks off of Congress in the name of Jesus. You won't keep us out. Democrat or Republican, you won't keep us out. We have the keys. We're stronger than you. We have more authority than you do. The King has given us the access keys. We open the door for the ecclesia to come and to rule and to reign. We close and lock the door to demons and ideologies of hell in Jesus' name. We open the doors to the state houses, all states, open in Jesus' name. You won't keep us out. The ecclesia uh, is rising to use the supernatural keys. The keys of authority, the anointing of the Chamberlain rise in America and this world through an ecclesia. Rise to open the doors to the kingdom of God to come in and reign like the King says. We declare in Jesus' name, doors of opportunity unlimited, unlimited, unlimited in Jesus' name. Let the ecclesia arise, Lord, in Ohio and declare their voice, Lord. Begin to declare their voice. Resound with keys of authority declaring open in Jesus' name. Let it rise in Ohio, in Michigan, in Indiana, West Virginia, all the states, all the nations, let the ecclesia arise with the keys in their voice and declare open, open, open for the kingdom to come in.